Hello everybody, it's Marcia from Oils and Wellness with Marcia and continuing or um, the chap the, the chapter I'm reading or the page article I'm reading today is called Naked and Afraid by Debbie Harris. It was the morning of the 13th birthday and I had never felt more lonely and lost. As usual, I celebrated my birthday alone. Well, not entirely alone. I, as a result of rotating work schedules that kept my husband and me apart, the evening of my birthday was spent with my three kids. As I gazed around the room, looking from the outside in, I appeared as if I had at all, it all. The career, the car, the house, the family, and the typical suburban life as I felt diminished, yet I felt diminished. In my pursuit of an ideal life, I had neglected my own passions, and by failing to take care of myself, I began to downward spiral of self-slothering. I developed a negative body image which constantly challenged my self-worth. I wasn't happy. I had spent my 20s climbing the ladder. My mother, my mother, <laughs> my work as an elder, elder care professional was my life and I had let it define my being. However, in, in my pursuit of professional success, I felt as though I had lost myself. After what seemed like a lifetime's effort of taking care of others, I felt I was losing my own life in the process. I knew I had to start living a life that actually felt good, a life I could sustain, and that I knew to exit, to exist in my in my heart, a life that I was proud to say was mine and where I could be the trust the truest version of me reflecting on my life I reviewed the vibrant dreams and aspirations that laid dormant for over a decade and watched as they returned in full color the first goal I set was to run the marathon I knew nothing about marathons, not even the distance. I realized there was nothing stopping me from running but me. Like a rocket waiting to launch, I felt as though my fuse had been lit and I was on a mission to live and to find my true self. Over the course of the next year and a half, Running became my obsession. Running was the one thing that gave me clarity and allowed me to fully be myself. I started small, running a half mile without stopping. I became disciplined, increased my distance rapidly. In a three months period, I ran six half marathons, four marathons and one triathlon. The miles I had put under my feet, the endless hours of nothing but myself versus my mind, the voices telling me to stop, the 1,500 miles changed and, ex and energized me, giving me the strength and the ap appetite for more. Having once looked in the mirror, disgusted by a reflection that seemed to show my own self-doubt, unachieved dreams, self-hate, and negative self-talk. I began to see something new, something strong, something powerful, something that helped me fall in love with, my, with me again. My inner voice had shifted from doubt to one that encouraged me, pushed me, a voice that had me be, to help me be better, that made me be better. I had become my own biggest fan, and nothing felt impossible. I am the myths 
of my own transformation. I was flipped through the TV channels late at night and came across the show Naked and Afraid. At the glance, I was horrified. A man and woman surviving naked in the wild for 21 days. I thought to myself, ridiculous. Yet, here we complain here we complete strangers stranded on a dangerous and desert desoluted location without food and water and they were completely naked their only prize was their pride and sense of accomplishment i was captivated in fact i was i said to myself if this 31 year old mother of three in Wisconsin can find a discipline to do this, I could go and go on to do anything. I applied and was accepted. My preparation for the show involved more than just learning how to start fires. I began to experience my life more deeply and with more passion than before. I took time to, to closely observe my childhood. The magic they had, they had, they held. The captivity blew in their eyes. I paid more attention to my body. I may lay in bed at night just thinking, soaking in the familiar warmth and comfort. Everything I ate, I appreciated more, knowing that I could, would be so hungry. I savored every bite. I took nothing for granted. Before I knew it, I was on the phone. I was on the plane heading for Guam. G U Y A N A, Guam. I think that's right. In South America, I committed to staying fully present. I didn't want to miss out on one on on a single moment of the experience. I knew nothing about what was to come, but I did know these two things. I was going on an adventure of a lifetime, no matter how insane it sounded to others. And I was determined to accomplish my goal to finish all 21 days in the jungle, surviving naked with nothing but one item and a random naked stranger. During my 21 days in the jungle of Guam, I endured the harshest environment conditions I have ever experienced. Physical pain, extreme lack of food and clean water, endless nights without sleep, and exposure to every environmental challenge a jungle climate can offer, becoming par for the course. Throughout it all, I felt more alive and grateful for my life than ever before. In fact, I created a daily discipline of gratitude being grateful for available water, that the fires didn't go out, and the palm leaves that made up a, a frame shelter had kept the rain off of me in the night. I would meditate and, pra and practice affirmations. One of my favorite quotes kept uh, echoing in my head. She believed she could so she did. The habit of discipline paid off in constant working and improving our living situation. We, reg we regularly hunted for food, finding grubs and nuts in the cucurit palm. We found fish, snake, even some reptiles, even small reptiles. Every morning I awoke expecting to feel close to death. But in reality, I felt more alive. After 21 days, I emerged from the jungle, having discovered a discipline I never had before and experiencing renewed gratitude for life. On the flight home, wanting to hold my babies in my arms again, everything I thought of seemed foreign. A bed, a chair, a fork, a glass to put water in, people, lights, running water, 
and the list goes on and on. Three weeks of daily crying doesn't seem long and typically flies by pretty quickly, but three weeks living primitively in the jungle seems endless. As I returned to my former life, I began to create new disciplines around the, my, the gratitude that had kept me going in Guam. I realized the community and giving back, random acts of kindness, volunteering. These are the things that I've become more conscious of and grateful for. You always hear about the near-death experience, one that awakened the soul of the of the person to, to live their life with greater passion and to pursue their dreams. My 21 days in Guam was a near life experience, challenging me to live life to the fullest and giving me an experience awareness about myself and about possibly possibility that never had before, that I had never had before. Hopefully you don't have to find yourself naked in the South American jungle with a stranger, a complete stranger, like Debbie did, in order to discover the discipline within you. The discipline you need to change your life is already there. You are more disciplined than you realize. For instance, if you don't think you have it in you to pick up a second or third job, To get out of your current financial mess, you do. Let's use an extreme example to prove the point. What if, what if the only way to save your child from a life-threatening disease was to earn the money to pay for treatment? Would you find the discipline within you to make that happen? You would. Discipline is a short term in, in one thing. This one in the short term is one thing. But there will be moments in your life when you'll want to develop enduring discipline to achieve a long-term goal. And that's uh, that's all I have for you today. Tomorrow I'll be reading Freedom by Lindsay Elmore. And I know Lindsay. I haven't met her in person, but I know her from Young Living Essential Oils. She's a, she's a doctor. And she's very smart. Very, very, you can learn a lot from her. And I can't wait to read this and share it with you. Uh, if you have any comments about what I just read, make it in afraid. Uh, leave them in the comment section, and I'll try to get the answers to you as soon as I can. I see you guys tomorrow, and have a wonderful day. Ta ta.